Um, so I'm doing question seven from the textbook, exercise 11B, and it's a, it's a, um, a cost matrix. So all of these Hungarian matrix or Hungarian algorithm situations are usually trying to minimize cost or distance um, or something along those lines. Um, you get the flow rate stuff coming as well. So I'm just going to quickly draw up the matrix and then we'll start talking about how we go through it. Now I'm sort of finding at the moment, because this is new to us as well, new curriculum, we've never taught the Hungarian matrix here in Queensland, um, Hungarian algorithm, sorry, in Queensland. So it's new to me as well. So while I was setting up the videos originally, I actually had the step-by-step -step next to me because it is really just a recipe. Um, and as long as you learn to follow the step-by-step, -step, it always works out. But it is quite complex, the step-by-step. -step. So I started with it next to me as I was doing questions and then I practiced trying to not have it because you won't have it in the exam. Um, so I've almost written this out now. I've got a bit of a lag on the computer for some reason. 90, 135 and 85. So step one is a row reduction. And in step one, we, first, we start by finding the least value in each row and reducing every value in that row by that least value. So it's 80, um, 80 again, 75 and 85. It's the last value in every row, which is a bit boring. So I'm gonna do a new matrix. This time I'll be reducing by 80, 80, 75 and 85. The first row I reduce by 80, which gives me 30, 15, 60 and zero. It should always introduce some zeros at this stage. I reduce the second row by 80, giving me 25, two, 65 and zero. I reduce the third row by 75, which gives me 50, three, uh, what's that? 65 and zero. And I reduce the fourth row by 85, which gives me 35, um, 50 and zero. Now, this has made it a bit nicer to work with because it's reduced all my high numbers down, which is great. But these numbers in a new matrix, they do not relate to the context at all then. We could not use them within the context. Now, the next step is to test to see whether I can cover all my zeros in less than four lines, four straight lines. Four because it's a four by four situation. And I can see that I can cover the zeros in one straight line. So that means I have to continue on and I only stop when I can only cover them with four lines where I can't do it in less than that. So let's do my next matrix. I've got all the zeros here. I'm now going to do what's called a column reduction. So step one is the row reduction. Step two is a column reduction. And in the column reduction, I take the lowest value in each column and reduce every other value in that column by that lowest value. So two I can see is the lowest value there. 25 is the lowest value there and 50 is the lowest value there. And obviously these are all zeros, so I'm not gonna do much to that last one. That will stay as zeros. I've reduced the first column by 25, giving me a five, a zero, a 25, and a five. Then I've reduced the next one by two, giving me 13, one, oh, sorry, zero, one, and three. I reduce the third column by 50, which gives me 10, 15, 15, and zero. And now I'm looking to see if I can cover all my zeros in less than four lines. So I, this is a nice one here. I cover four of them in once, but I see the best I can do now is that and that, which is three lines. So I have to carry on. So you have to make sure at this point though, that you've actually drawn your lines on your matrices because we have these values here, they're called our exposed values. And we have these values here that are covered by two of the lines. And they're going to be important for different reasons. So the next thing I do is I find my least value exposed. And in this case, that's a one. And I get that one, I subtract it from every exposed value and I add it on to all of my double covered values. And again, these numbers have got nothing to do with the context anymore. So we're kind of at that stage. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is recognize that all of my single covered numbers stay the same. So I'm gonna fill all those in. So there's my single covered numbers and they all stay the same. Um, I've got a little bit of lag on here, so you might have a little bit of lag at your end as well. 
Now I'm going to add, I'm going to subtract one from all of my exposed values. So five drops down to four, 13 drops down to 12, 10 drops down to nine, 25 drops down to 24, one drops to zero and 15 drops to 14. And I'm going to add one to all my unexposed numbers. So I get a one there and a one there. Oh, sorry, not unexposed to all my double covered numbers, which are in those pink squares there. Um, that's now this is the process. We repeat this process until we cannot cover the zeros in anything less than four straight lines. And you'll find with a three by three and a four by four and even a five by five, which is about as far as you would get in an exam, that this will happen quite quickly. So don't expect to have to do this step more than um, probably twice. I've not done a question yet where you have to do it more than once. So if I have a look at this, I'm trying to find a way to cover all the zeros in less than one, uh, less than four ways. And I can't really see it. I can see that if I do this row, it doesn't matter whether I do this row or this column, that's the only way to cover the zero there below the 14. Um, this knocks out two and this knocks out two, but I'm still left with that one there. So it seems to me like I can't cover this in less than four straight lines and that indicates to me that we're finished but it's really important here that you um, practice this this is the only one that doesn't follow the, the recipe this is the only time you've really got to be a bit logical and so you've got to have a really close look and try and work out if you can cover the um, zeros in a more efficient way and you'll find you'll, you'll find that you build strategies because um, once you realize something along the lines of well there's a zero in every single row and there's a zero in every single column, that's usually a pretty good indication that you're getting close. Um, and then start looking at, well, this covers two, a row and a column by itself, and there's no other zeros there. So we're looking to try and double up zeros in our covering, but we can't. There's no way to, of doing it. Um, so in this case, I'm pretty confident we're finished. And so now we turn this into a bipartite graph. And a bipartite graph is where we match up and I'm going to go back to the context now. If you have a look at question seven, this is W, X, Y, and Z. And this is A, B, C, and D. And we set up that bar pi type graph, W, X, Y, and Z, where our zeros are matchings, they're connections. A, B, C, and D. I've got a real lag on my computer. Okay, there we go. Uh, so W is connected to D only. That's with this zero here. So I'm going to connect W to D, and I can see that my assignment is going to be pretty easy. Straight away, W has to be connected to D. X is connected to A and B. Y is connected to B and D. And Z is connected to C. So now I have to develop a matching from that. W has to match with D. Z has to match with C. Because W matches with D, Y has to match with B, and X, therefore, has to match with A. Now, question seven asks you to find the allocation that gives you the minimum cost. That is the allocation. Always just take, take your time to reread the question and make sure that you've actually answered it. It might ask you for the minimum cost. In this case, it doesn't. If it did ask you for the minimum cost, I would just write down that um, W connecting to D provides us with a cost of 80. X connecting to A is a cost of 105. Y connecting to B is a cost of 78. And Z connecting to C is a cost of 135. And the minimum cost therefore is the sum of these, which is 160, 244, 398, I think. Um, obviously, you do that in a calculator and make sure of it, but that would be your minimum cost. So it could ask you to take that extra step, but in this case, it's actually only asked you to go there. And that's question 7A. Yeah. 